Welcome back to this week's edition of The Walkthrough. It is actually episode 31, and you know who famously wore number 31, Eric? I mean, I got three athletes off the top of my head. Greg Maddox, Mm -hmm. Reggie Miller, Mm -hmm. Mike Piazza, Dave Winfield. Bingo. I could could go for days on this. And the good news is that this week we don't have any Byron Lazine holding us back. Uncle Byron is currently sitting in St. Barth's with his feet up. I'm sure a glass of whiskey, a cigar in his mouth. While we are all here licking envelopes in the mailroom, making sure (laughs) that we provide you with the best content possible. I am your co-host, Dan O'Neill, and I have feverishly been waiting to have the chance to get back in the saddle here. As always, joining me is the devilishly handsome, incredibly big-brained genius, Eric, the broke agent, Simon. How are you, Eric? That's right. I'm fantastic. Let's make this the most liked episode of the walkthrough of all time. I want 150 likes right now. If you're watching this, like this episode on YouTube. Yes. And rumor has it too. uh, Byron was a little bit uh, disappointed with the views. So that's why he called in the A team here. Uh, And speaking of the A team, also joining us is repeat offender. I mean, uh, guest, Uh, you know him from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Uncle Tommy, the guru, Tom Tool. Tom, I'm sorry about the Phillies, but how you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. And I am also working and not on vacation. And the Mike Piazza shout out. I played Little League with his brother. He is from my hometown. So cool. Phoenixville's <laughs> finest, Mike Piazza. It's going to be a good episode. All right. We're, we're canning this episode now. Also, uh, for the first time ever, I believe, making her BAM debut. If you do not follow her, you need to. All the way from my favorite place on earth, Charleston, South Carolina, <laughs> is Kat Drayrup. Kat, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hello, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day in Charleston, South Carolina. It is always a beautiful day in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, But that's great, and I'm glad to have you on here. I think we're all super excited. And let's get right into it. As always, if you appreciate us being here, make sure you like and hit the subscribe button. Rumors are flying around here that I may be coming on the show as a mainstay. I don't know. Those are just rumors. The rumor mill is going. But make sure to comment and let Byron know that he can stay in St. Bart's Forever. <laughs> You'd have forever. to go to St. Bart's first to stay yes, there forever. Okay. All right. Clear. Thanks, Tom. No problem. Topic number one. If we could put this on the screen. And while this came out last week, I believe Thursday or Friday, we weren't able to cover it on the show. But last week's inflation report was a big win for rates. Mortgage rates fall sharply to under 7% after inflation eases. The average rate on a 30-year fixed plunged 60 basis points from 7.2% to 6.6%. Finally, some positive news after four months of rate increases and all of these negative headlines. This is the perfect time as an agent to make sure that you are calling your sphere, posting on social media, calling your clients, calling everyone you know, and sharing this positive news. Everybody's situation is different, but for someone with a real desire or a need to buy, this is huge. This is great news. Tom, I will start with you. I had my coaching call with Jeff Mays Friday at 11 a.m. I hadn't even woken up yet, and he had told me that you and your team were already doing emergency press conferences. You guys were already (laughs) doing videos. You guys were already setting appointments, 50 calls each. You acted on this news before I even drank my coffee. How important is it to act swiftly on positive news like this? You want to be the knowledge broker in this business. And if you can be the one delivering the news to your clients, the people that are trusting you to guide them through a stressful process like buying and selling real estate, that impact and that trust is going to be developed instantly. So we had a specific game plan where um, as soon as we, we have a role play call every day at nine o'clock, that was the first thing we worked on is, hey, have you guys heard about rates? Here's the script. We're going to practice that. We put it out on our Slack channel, email, our Facebook group. We got our folks ready with the information they needed. Uh, In addition to that, we emailed our entire database. We put together a less than uh, 60-second vertical video. I know Eric will like that part. We put it on Instagram. We actually collab with uh, BAM. We sent it out to our entire database of over 51,000 people because it's that important. Um, And then the important thing here is not just like sending the video out. I know a lot of agents are going to stop there. You actually have to pick up the phone. You said calling three or four times in that intro. That's the key here. That's the gas on the fire that you've got to get on the phone and say, Hey, Dan, did you, did you see what happened with interest rates? And most people, literally people that are ready to buy a home are like, what are you talking about? So 
the fact that we were able to get that kind of traction, show folks we know what we're, 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 we're doing here, we can deliver that sort of news, it's going to help them save a lot of money. And you got to know the stats, right? So our average sale price is around four and a quarter. So on a $400,000 loan, that drop for rates that we're getting quoted on Friday is a $207 a month savings. And combining that with some showing time data, and KCM has a great chart on this. I went local because the Northeast is a little different. Showings are down 10.1% in the Northeast, according to showing time. And we've seen inventory increase in May, or since May, excuse me, in the three counties we serve and the city of Philadelphia, anywhere from 29 to 34%. So now you're able to go to buyers and say, inventory's up competition's down and rates went down. What else are you waiting for? That's a powerful message that's going to help you close a few more transactions before the end of the year and also really help people save money on their payment. Amen. I, I was incredibly impressed by how, how quickly you guys uh, acted on that news. Um, Kat, what were some things that you were doing maybe over the weekend or, or on Friday to share this news with your sphere, with your, your team, your clients? Well, we have a lot of people that have kind of waited on the sidelines. So a lot of buyers are saying, hey, I saw 3% pass me by and I'm waiting and that's never going to happen to get down to where we were. You know, it might. We can't predict that. But in terms of people waiting for the interest rates to drop, you know, we have a whole list of people that are ready to go, but they're sitting on the sidelines. And the thing, the message that we're telling people is, you know, it's not just your interest rate that you need to consider. It's, you know, you have more buying power, not only are interest rates dropping, but, um, you know, you can have closing costs paid for everyone's market is a little different, of course, but, you know, overall, it's not a competitive as of a competitive market as it was. And so not only are you, you know, you're almost at 10% more than if you had looked at, just the interest rate, just the price. These things are now coinciding. And before price was way over ask. Yeah. And, and I think news like this too, more than anything, I mean, I had agents on my team like, well, well what is these people are going to just buy a house this weekend? No, majority probably won't. But right. it's your job. It's your obligation to reach out to your your clients, your past clients and give them this information. And more than anything, set up appointments, set up a buyer consultation Go over the pros and cons of buying now with this information or maybe waiting it out six or nine months, right? What are the pros and cons of buying now or waiting and just set the appointments, belly to belly exactly. appointments, Zoom appointments, a coffee, whatever it is, just get in front of as many people as you can. Eric, what are some things maybe agents can be doing on social media to share out positive news like this? Well, not everyone has a war room media company set up like Tom <laughs> Tool does where he could literally bring in professional lighting and cameramen from Fox News, whatever he had going on. He had an impressive operation. I thought he was Geraldo, you know, standing out there in Portugal or wherever, whatever country. Or 9 a.m. Mind you, I didn't even wake up Exactly. Yet. But what, what I, I want to find something Tom said, the agent should be the one to deliver that news, right? So instead of the, the, um, the buyer who's scrolling through Twitter or he's on the internet or she's on the internet and they come across the CNBC article, what does that mean to them? You know, like they shouldn't be getting the news from them. They're, they should be getting the news from their actual agent. So Tom sending that video to his clients, reaching out to his clients, calling, that's probably the best move possible. And what agents can do if you don't have that set up like Tom, it's very simple. You go on TikTok, you go on Instagram, use the green screen feature. You have the article on your back. You see all agents doing this right now. Ryan Serhant, Grant Cardone, Ricky Carruth, Byron, Tom Tool, everybody is, is using these articles as the hook and just explaining what it is. So that's a great way to reach your sphere without calling them, but you should be sending that video as well. And then also, you don't want to just like share Byron's video or Tom's video to your story. That's great for us. That's great content. We love when people share it, of course. But imagine another agent sharing another agent's explanation on that video right? That doesn't have the same effect as Tom actually calling that client or them seeing that video from Tom. So I think having the ability to see it, throw it on green screen, talk about it right away. That's the best way to deliver that content. Yeah. And I, and I heard a ton too. I mean, even from my own agents, like, oh, well, Byron already did that video or Tom Tool did that video. Well, your buyers probably aren't following Byron Lazine and Tom Tool. So get out of your own yeah. head and post the video. It's, it's important news. Um, any, any final thoughts? So our agents actually did this. So even though we sent out one to the entire database, we're really mindful of emailing through the database. So we have a, a separate email list we use through MailChimp. 
our agents sent the same video to their people and it was like a one-to-one -one video and then calling them. So what Eric said is absolutely right. I mean, it, it just because we, you know, we have the setup here, you know, the videos we did early on sucked. Like you can look at them. I was all pudgy. The lighting sucked. Like it was horrible. You can just literally shoot it on your phone and, 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 and do what, do that. But it's, you've got to call them. And what, what I would say here too, is that this, this is, this could be time sensitive because the, the fed came out right after this happened over the weekend. One of the fed chairmen, this was on housing wire. And they were like, oh, well, we're real early here. We got a, we got a long way to go. And they basically have tamped down all the enthusiasm about what could happen here. And it, it seems like they're, they're just so certain that they want to crash the housing market and keep raising rates. And they have another meeting coming up in December. This may be a short window. So it's not about getting them to buy a home this weekend. It's about following up with them with value and explaining what's going on in the market. And that's where a lot of agents miss because they just follow up to follow up. It's like, hey, Dan, you ready to buy a house yet? Okay, I'll call you when you are. Instead of, hey, here's what's happening. Is this going to affect your decision that you're making? Because this is a pretty big financial decision for you. So knowing what, what's going on and communicating that with the client's interest in mind, that's the kind of agent that's going to win the end of this year and especially in 2023. Tom, I got a question. Ignorant person here. All I care about is content, sports, partying. What, how often do they have these meetings, the Fed? Like who, who's in these meetings? How often are they having them? It seems like they happen once every couple of weeks. Are they random? Does anyone know or they just keep saying they're going to have another meeting? <laughs> who are they and when is this happening? And who decides so, when it's happening? Seriously, so I have no idea. They are scheduled. Great question. They have a schedule. Um, this is actually a legitimate question because you know what? Yeah. I bet you the realtors watching, some of these people have the same questions. They're like, oh, the 100%. Fed. 100%. I'm the, the voice of the people. Nobody knows what they're talking yeah. about. So the Federal Reserve has their meetings scheduled well in advance. Think of like the NFL schedule only years in mm. advance. So they know when it's going to happen. It's not like baseball where they just have the, they decide the day before what time they're playing the game, right? Does that speak to you a little bit, Eric? Does that make a little yes. sense? Yes, um, thank On you. top Perfect. of that, the Federal Reserve, they set monetary policy for the country and they're appointed by our elected officials. So they decide if they're going to raise or lower the Fed funds rate or keep it the same. They monitor inflation data. They, they, they are basically the economists for the country that set policy that can influence what happens in the markets. Got it. By the way, I knew that answer. I just wanted yeah. to ask that question so our audience would also understand it. That's what a yep. good host does. Appreciate great, it. Great job, Eric. Great yeah. job, Tom and Kat. All right, moving on to topic number two. As always, if you like what we're doing, if we are entertaining you, and if you are learning something, make sure to like and subscribe and tell Byron to stay in the Caribbean. Topic number two, <laughs> Lawrence Yun, NAR's chief economist, predicts that the this guy also? That's my Won't cousin, Lawrence. Up, huh? uh, NAR's chief economist predicts that the lack of inventory next year or this year will prevent a steep decline in home prices and predicts a strong rebound in 2024. Yun also states how the recession that we are in now is fundamentally different than the Great Depression. I am not a chief economist. In fact, I... Barely graduated econ 151 in college, but I believe it is important to go off of numbers and stats and not feelings. So while I do not have a crystal ball myself, I do have my hyper local market numbers. And even given the season and everything going on, our prices are still up by 5%. Inventory is still down 4%. So that's going to be you know per market. But there are a lot of people with 2 3 4% interest rates that won't sell or that don't need to sell leaving us with a lack of inventory. So Kat, how do you feel about Mr. Lawrence Young's prediction? Will a lack of inventory help next year or help us next year maintain pricing? I think that, again, a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines and waiting for something to crash. And that's just not the case because we still have buyer demand that's steady. So even though there's a lack of inventory, there's still steady buyer um, needs that need to be met. And especially in the fourth quarter, we're seeing um, people have to be somewhere over the holidays. Like if somebody is looking for a house over Thanksgiving and Christmas, they have somewhere to be. And so even though there's a lack of inventory, there's still opportunity for everybody to, um, you know, buyers need to get into something. Historically, interest rates are still low. And, um, you know, that, that this yeah. is what the world is right now. And so this is what we're needing to deal with. Tom, do you agree with, with Lauren's prediction that a lack of inventory will help us maintain, you know, uh, pricing stability, uh, predicting a strong rebound for 2024? 
What, do you, what are your feelings on this, Tom? So here's what I know. And I, I passed Econ 101 and 102, micro and macro, Dan. So I've got you. Sure beat you here. did. Sure I you got at, flying at what college is this? Syracuse? The, the, the Syracuse University. Um, <laughs> anyway, good institution. The, the, the point is, it's, it's okay. Um, so <laughs> the, the point is, we, we have a supply issue. And until inventory gets up to like that six month supply, and this is going to vary all over the country, it's really critical to identify this you're not going to see prices come down. Six months is the magic number. That's what all the economists say, that when you get there, buyers and sellers have equal leverage. And I look at our, our marketplace here, and we have the city of Philadelphia and then the suburban counties. And the suburban counties are fluctuating between a one and a 1.4 month supply right now. Philadelphia's at four. So Philadelphia, there, there's a little more softness with the pricing than there is out in, in certain counties out here, whether it's Chester, Delaware, Montgomery County. So this is not going to be a national number. Uh, if you look at the other predictions, the Home Price Expectation Survey is predicting 2.6% appreciation next year. NAR is at 1.2. Uh, the Mortgage Bankers Association is at 0.7%, so just under a percentage point. And then you got Fannie Mae, who's at negative 0.2, uh, or excuse me, Fannie Mae's at negative one and a half. Freddie Mac's at negative 0.2%, and then you got Ivy Zellman, who's at negative 5.1. So these predictions are all over the place, and it's going to be local to Cat's point. I mean, there, there's going right. to be some markets that they appreciate no matter what happens. And until inventory comes up in these places, we're not going to see it because there is still lots of demand coming in and it's got to be people that are motivated. I was through the Great Depression in, in or whatever they call it, in 2008. In the, in the 20s? Yeah, I've, <laughs> I I've been in time. real estate since 1955, apparently. So, uh, but it's it, like it, that was a much harder market because people weren't transacting. Buyers have intent right now. And if they have intent, they're going to transact. So, I'm, I'm clearly Lawrence Yoon's on the right path here, and he's always been pretty spot on with his predictions. I don't see this changing until we, inven we see inventory come up. And, you know, rates are kind of a mystery here, but we've seen that, you know, 7% didn't really slow people down from having multiple offer situations. Dan, I don't know what you saw in the markets you serve, but the homes that were priced right in those desirable neighborhoods still had yep. competition and still were moving. So right. I, and until inventory comes up, I just I just don't see it happening. The, the data is not there, and the and the basic economic principles don't support it. Yeah, inventory is at a quarter of what it was in two thousand eight. He mentions also. Um, yeah. So there's my and, stat for you. And Tom, <laughs> there's, you, there's you, the one I had tee up right there. And Tom, you you mentioned too that there's a, a four month of of supply right now in your in your local market. Uh, as always, make sure to check out KCM and their charts. KCM shows that nationally we're still under seven months worth of supply, which would still indicate that we're we're really nationally in a, in a seller's market, uh, contrary to mm -hmm. belief. So, again, check out KCM, their charts. We all use them. They are the There's best. Link down below. Yes. Try it for free. L link down below. But we're still seeing this lack of inventory. And that, I think, fundamentally will be why we don't see such a drastic uh, slash in price for this next year. And like you said, we're still listing homes that are we're having 30, 40 showings. They're still selling if we price them aggressively. Are we still seeing price drops and, and reductions? Of course, but that also goes into seller's expectations, what their agents are pricing them, making sure that they price them where rates are now versus when 2021, 2022, when rates were 3%. So there, there are a lot of different factors, but I, I for one, believe in Lawrence Young. Any final thoughts? <laughs> He's also expecting a big rebound in 2024. He thinks the um, average or the home sales will increase by 10%. The average price will appreciate by 7%. So he's expecting a big rebound during election year, during the Bitcoin halving, during the year <laughs> where I believe the final four is in Phoenix, where the Arizona Wildcats will be attending and I will be there as well. So that's a big year looking ahead. For all of us, 2024 will be 34 be prepared years there. That was just great, great co-hosting. You, you had the, Thank you. the numbers, the locations, everything. Kat, any final thoughts on Mr. Lawrence, <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Young's uh, report here? Uh, no, I think we all hit it. All right, excellent. It was actually a 5% uh, jump in the national median home prices, what he predicted in 2024, not 7%. So but that's on the high correction. end of the norm, right? It's right. always been like 3 to 5%. Everyone thinks, and this is going to be a great segue to the next article, Dan. I'm, I'm jumping in here. But everyone thinks like 2021 was this year that like is sustainable. 18% more homes sold than the historical average in 2021. That is bananas. And right now, we're only about 1% off the historical average. So there's this picture being painted that it's a horrible time to be in real estate. This is just a normal market. Yeah. You want a bad market? Jump in the DeLorean and get it. Go to 2008. Then you'll then you'll see what a bad market's like. And I can say that from experience. What well, were you doing I, in 2008, Dan? 
Um, I was playing second base for the Ward Melville Patriots. Hmm. The only Long Island baseball team to have three major leaguers. Not a big deal. What were you doing Thanks. in 2008, Eric? Were you at a U of, a U of A basketball game drinking four <laughs> locos? Probably, yeah. I was yeah. graduating high school. Before they were to... illegalized? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, as the co-host here, let me get us back on track. Yes. <laughs> Let's move on to topic number three. As always, make sure to check out the KCM link below. And please like and subscribe because we need it. All right. Topic number three. This is a bit of a misleading headline. Classic. Uh, but maybe some truth mm -hmm. behind it. Yahoo Finance says 37% of real estate agents in the U.S. couldn't afford to pay their rent in October. Uh, it goes on to say, after you get kind of all through the, the garbage, uh, that in October, 37% of real, real estate agents struggle to pay rent on their offices. So maybe it's not their home. Uh, but again, a bit of a clickbaity, misleading article, classic. Um, something that I think we should be getting used to now uh, as we move on to 2023. Tom is grinning ear to ear. I don't know why. But anyway, while the, market, while the market is down and also the season, I thought this would be a good time to share some habits that maybe have worked in 2021, 20, 22, that maybe they won't be the same that are working now. And again, while there may be some truth behind that article, um, I have put together three things that I could articulate you do if you listen for 2023. You want to hear them, Tom? I'm, I'm chomping at the bit here, Danny. All right. Number one is to make sure that you operate with stats and facts, not feelings. I understand you feel that way, but here are the facts. Here are the stats. Tom is a stat wizard. The guy's literally rattled off 20 so far in this episode. Number two is look for opportunity because it exists. Who is it? Where is it? And what is it? Who is your opportunity going to be, Eric? Number three is go all in on social and act quick, act quick and adjust. Those are my four mm -hmm. points for agents. When you see these articles, not to get down, don't feel sorry for yourself, but get in the right habits. Tom, what is your take on this article and what can we as agents be focusing on in 2023? You know, I think you can just write whatever you want at this point when it comes to these articles and just make things up because that's what <laughs> continually happens. It's, it's bananas to me that, that, that this goes on. So um, you said something really important, and I, I just want to start as a preface here that I am clear the agents who win in 2023 are going to have to have drastically different behaviors than the people that sold a lot of real estate in 21 and 22, unless they've already been doing the right things. Because there's so many people out there that just they, they, they showed up, they did some deals and they think it's easy. And they're in that like unconsciously incompetent phase where they think they sold seven or eight homes. And they're the bomb now and they don't need to do the work. And this is going to be a real challenge for a lot of real estate agents out there. So I would really watch this and, and dial in. Um, you talked about sharing stats and I, I could not agree with that more. Proper preparation prevents poor performance and just knowing what's happening in the market and being able to explain it to someone that has no idea what's going on in the market is going to be critical. You start using jargon like LTV and appraisal gaps. Like the average <laughs> consumer is going to look at you like, your are Eric trying to explain real estate. So it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be good, um, but don't use jargon I th and, and know the numbers. So it's not only knowing the numbers and it's the communication style behind it, because people are really uncertain right now, like really uncertain about what's going on because of articles like this, that it's, they might, they might as well just write like, ha ha JK underneath the articles when they come yeah, out right. with these headlines. It's right. like, it's just totally unrelated. So that would be the first one. Don't use jargon, know the market, be the knowledge broker and prep before your appointments, understand the sales in the area. That's going to be really critical. Number two, the game is follow up right now. Most agents aren't used to follow up. In the past two years, a lot of people just showed up. They took the lead and they said, hey, you got to bid 25 percent above the asking price. Give me your firstborn child and waive all the contingencies and maybe we'll get the house. And we have 30 seconds to decide. Go. And that's how people were bidding on properties. Right. Now, what's happening is and this historically has happened in sales. All the follow up is where the money's at. When you get to six plus attempts on follow up for a lead, that's where the conversion happens. The average realtor, according to NAR, only follows up 2.7 times. So the average realtor is not doing it. You've got to think six, 10, 15, 20 attempts just to get someone to meet with you. And it's going to be about having a bigger funnel, a bigger pool, because the bigger the pool, the bigger the business. That's one of our, our recession buster rules here at our team. And the third item is that you're going to have to go back to basics when it comes to your meeting cadence and how you approach clients. And I'm going to give you two sub points there. One is actually schedule a meeting with them. 
a strategy session, a planning meeting, and go over their goals and sit down and hash that out beforehand. Show them what the numbers look like, what their payment's going to look like, and now in terms they can understand, and how the process is going to go, because they have time to do that now, and that's going to lead to better decisions. And with that, when you're advising your clients, you've got to take your interest out of it and tell them stuff like, hey, this home is not for you, or this buyer is not going to be a good buyer for us because their financial stink. It's not just slaying deals left and right like a lot of agents are used to and just closing whatever comes in you're going to have to put your interest above the the or excuse me you're going to put the client's interest above your own and detach from the outcome and make them feel like there's no pressure to make a decision because people aren't going to put up with that anymore and Mm -hmm. it's a different market now those three things i'm clear are going to help people win in 2023 and the agents that don't do it they're probably one of those 800,000 plus agents that haven't sold home yet this year and it ain't happening. It's, it's Thanksgiving next mm-hmm. week. Year's over. You're done. Just yep. hand in your license now. Right. Um, all great points. I just have to ask one question. Have you gone one day in your life without saying the two words knowledge, knowledge broker? broker. <laughs> one day. Yes, I got to ask. Yes, like, do you wake up in a, in a stupor saying knowledge <laughs> broker? Do you, do you count knowledge brokers in your sleep like sheep before you go to sleep? I mean, it is. You can't count that many because they don't exist there. It's, it's, see, it's a load of questions. People <laughs> exactly. Are well, Tom, I love everything you said, and I think it's really important, too, to get back to being a relationship agent and not just a transactional agent. We have been very blessed over the last few years, uh, which also has, in turn, gotten us into some bad habits. It's important to be working on yourself during this time. Make sure that you are in the right mindset. You have a little bit of time now, so put that extra 10% in your open houses. Put that extra 10% in your schedule. Wherever it needs to be, you got to be putting in that extra 10% and get back to being a relationship agent. Uh, Kat, what would be some suggestions for agents to be focusing on here in 2023? Well, I want to echo what Tom said and the fact that I feel like we have been sprinting for the past two, three years. And now we're at a slow jog where we can like actually grab some water on the way to the finish line, like maybe chit chat, like actually see the sign ahead, you know? And so now we can really dive in to our business again, instead of just being on to the next. And so um, our team is doubling down on marketing um, and strategy that way. I'm starting a YouTube channel, like subscribe, save, do all the things. (laughs) And I think that (laughs) video is so important and everyone is cringy at the beginning and everyone just needs to show their face to their clients because this 2023 year is all about setting expectations and people want to hear from that trusted resource. And you are the local real estate agent that is going to give them and provide that value. Um, the other thing we're doing is pop buys. We're able to actually pop by people's houses now because we're not always in the field showing property or making appointments. And so I plan to drop by people's houses, see how they're doing, um, and do a lot more client events because that is the best way to get in front of them. When you say you drop by and see how they're doing, do you have like a gift in hand or you just, oh yeah, always. like you text them before or you just show oh, up and yeah. knock? If someone just showed up and knocked and asked me how I was doing, I would probably <laughs> bludgeon them in the face. <laughs> no, we have. I always give them advance notice and I say, hey, okay. I'm popping by with something. If you're around, great. If not, I'll let me know where to leave it. Mailbox, doorstep, you know, don't want to get right. federally arrested or whatever. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> For the mailbox thing. <laughs> yes. Eric, how do you feel about when you when you see these clickbaity headlines? Do do they impact you at all? Do, do, they, do they anger you? Do you not care? <laughs> no, I don't. Do they anger me? No, it doesn't move the needle. Can you pay your in rent any in direction for my heartbeat whatsoever when I see these headlines? Before, besides, how can we turn this into content? And what should agents be talking about? But this age, this headline was so misleading. Thirty-seven percent of agents not being able to pay their rent, and then it says bad news for housing market in the sub headline. It's mm-hmm. about them not paying rent in October for some of their offices. Like that is the most misleading thing ever. It just shows you the doom and gloom that the news media wants to push out about the housing market, knowing that's gonna get clicks. That's gonna make agents look like morons. Like there's so many agents, they can't even afford their rent. So, I mean, these articles are also good for us to just continuously debunk, but no, it doesn't doesn't piss me off. I don't I, care. I think it's Who important cares? to remember too that, you know, they these people, they, they make money on, on ad clicks. They make money on ad revenue. So by putting out these fear mongering, you know, headlines, they're going to get clicks and they're going to make money. So if, you, if you're somebody that just sees the headline, you don't read the actual article, 
it is incredibly misleading. And, and those are going to be happening even more frequently uh, as we get into the holiday season and as we get into 2023. Uh, so that's it, why we have BAM to break these articles down and yeah. actually tell the truth behind them and talk about them like this. So agents aren't just sharing these headlines willy nilly. And, and I think too, to touch on what Tom said, creating certainty in a market really where there isn't a whole lot of it is, is our job, right? It, this is going to be one of the, the most important things to do. Uh, any final thoughts here before we go into topic number four? I'm looking forward to topic number four. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, topic, topic number, number five is, is better than number four. Topic number four is Instagram's new features. Uh, Eric, as the co-host here and the social media guru, we are going to rely on you here. Break it down for us. What's Instagram doing? Look, I feel, I, I feel a little resurgence back in Instagram. I know people were all in on TikTok the last six months. Everyone's saying Instagram engagement's all over the place. I think they're doing a pretty good job giving engagement back to its loyal users. I've seen a massive increase. I just had a Drake video that's reached like 4.5 million people recently, 100,000 shares. So they're starting to actually share our content again to people. But Instagram has implemented a couple new features. I know they mentioned it on the last walkthrough where you could actually schedule reels this is going to be huge for the next couple of months for agents like Byron, who is in uh, the Galapagos Islands right now, surfing on top of sea turtles. He can schedule all of his reels in advance. So this is a huge aspect um, for Instagram. You don't have to use like a third party service. Not that you could do that with reels. And then also Instagram now is allowing you to add music to a general feed post. So instead of adding audio to your reel, if you post a static image or you're posting listing photos, you can actually add music from the Spotify playlist that they give you right there. And I think it's awesome because it actually provides context. So if I am doing a meme about an island meme or something like that, I could use audio track of the island boys or of, I don't know, give me, (laughs) give give me an island song, someone. Revolution. Yeah, revolution, slightly stupid or something. Those are kind of more marijuana based, but the the Baja, sublime, exactly. So I think you'd actually use- Island boys? Wait, wait, wait. You said the island (laughs) The Weezer song. The Weezer song. Yeah, and you're on, really uh, uh, that one. Yeah, uh, that one. yes, yes, <laughs> whatever. Um, my point is, you could actually use this to provide more context to your post. If you're doing listing photos, it could actually enhance the scrolling experience of the user if you provide a cool song to it. So, I like this feature. And then, Instagram is also implementing a new feature where you could actually say, Message me in the feed post itself. So, that's going to drive a lot more of DM. So, if you post a listing photo, You could add the message me feature and say like message me for details. Then they DM you directly from the feed post. So that's pretty big. So pumped about the new features. Instagram is on its way back. Love it. That's all. Eric, as a, as a, uh, this could be a stupid question, but TikTok, there are a lot of uh, articles. And again, this could be clickbait, but there are a lot of articles that TikTok could be potentially banned down the line that, um, you know, it's users in its, in its home country are not allowed to use it all day long, or they are blocked from seeing certain things. Do you think that maybe some of these headlines are allowing Instagram to kind of get back into the limelight and yeah. get back more engagement and I, have more people on it? I think it's helping. I mean, I think Instagram's just doing a good job of evolving and taking what TikTok is doing. But I think a lot of people are turned off by TikTok's data. I think they're a lot turned off by the fact that TikTok serves America nonstop trash. All I see is stuff that I shouldn't be looking at, that I'm obsessed <laughs> with looking at. And what are they serving people in China? They're serving um, algebra problems. They're serving yeah. uh, physics problems. The yeah. average TikTok user in China wants to become an astronaut. The average TikTok user here wants to become a TikToker. So yeah. they are dumbifying our population. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Truly. I mean, think about it. Like, what, what do you scroll through in TikTok? It's people, you know, chopping up like a steak and throwing it in a blender. I'm getting yeah. served yeah. bathing suit pics nonstop, golf yeah. shots. Like, that's literally all I see is just <laughs> trash. <laughs> That's my time. I only get knowledge you. brokers in my feed. I'm so sure you do. Uh, yeah. Well, there's not too many of them. So Tom Tool just gets Jason Pantana and Tom Ferry on <laughs> yeah, stage. Exactly. He, he just gets Lawrence Young pointing up <laughs> statistics. I'm dancing to uh, dancing to the Mambo Boys or something. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I do, but I agree with you. I do think that these negative articles are influencing people to not use the app. I posted a stupid video a couple of weeks ago saying, "If you're not posting on TikTok, you're an idiot," and that was like my hook. <laughs> And there were so many comments being like, well, I guess I'm an idiot because I don't want to give away my data. And I also am not comfortable with this app, which I totally get now. So, yeah. And I mean, about an, an hour after, you po- after an hour after you posted that, they came out with that uh, the big headline. about. <laughs> 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 they actually did. It was perfect timing. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Well, anyway, listen, as we move on to our next topic, uh, if you are entertained, if you are learning, <laughs> if you are learning, make sure to like and subscribe. Tom, are Tom you Myers. peeing in the corner over there? What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at my notes for this next segment. It's very important. All right, all right. Uh, this is, this oh might God. be the first time we are ever going to be doing this segment on the show. So I will take the time while you are all uh, eager with anticipation to make sure that you like and subscribe. Topic number five. And hopefully this becomes a mainstay on the show. We are very festive here at BAM. Uh, and I say that for all of us. So topic number five will be our turkeys of the year. I will start first. You have to... You should define what that means because I had to separately ask Eric because I was Googling what is a turkey move? And it was all the 101 on how to move to Turkey. And then I urban dictionaried it and I would not recommend doing that either. So that's fantastic. That, that thanks for show right. You might be the turkey of the year for this this this, this, this move I right was here. Like, I don't what know. is the turkey move? That is, is this a Thanksgiving tradition I haven't heard about? Like what is happening? It, it's slang for something that is <laughs> Like a dud or a loser <laughs> or stupid, you know, something that happened or a person that screwed up, basically. Yeah. I will In the go South, first. we just say, bless your heart, and then we right. move on. So okay. I had it. I needed it defined. This is the bless, bless your heart <laughs> of the year, then. We well, attack that's... people in the Northeast viciously. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's, a... how, that's how we get along. I will uh, bless your heart, Elon Musk. This is not political-based at all. You will not see me leaving Twitter, none of the above. But I do believe that Elon Musk is a turkey, not only because he tried to back out of buying Twitter and then was basically forced to buy it, but from what he has done in the small amount of time that he has owned Twitter. I am scrolling through my, my timeline, trying to get news, trying to get articles, trying to find out maybe what's going on with the new Call of Duty video game. Mm -hmm. And I am just riddled with what appears to be fake check marks. I don't know who is real, who is an imposter account, who's fake. I am getting news from left, right, center, right, middle, Elon Musk, bless your heart. You are my turkey. I love you. You're a genius. Let's go. Tesla aliens are real. But he is my turkey of the year for buying Twitter and then destroying it. Tom, you have been you've been foaming at the mouth for your turkey of the year here. Can I make one comment on your turkey of the year? Sure. I think he's brought a lot of fun back to Twitter. There's a lot of interest back to Twitter right now. It's a fun place mm -hmm. to consume content. But I totally agree. Now that you see all these blue check marks, especially in like crypto Twitter, there's so many scammers. There's so much news that is now being disseminated from these accounts with blue checks, which used to actually mean something. So when he yeah. first said Twitter blue, $8 a month, blue check mark, I was like, hell yeah, this sounds incredible. I'll finally like be verified on something. But <laughs> he closed that window immediately. So you basically had like three days to do it. I think it was launched on November 8th and closed on November 10th. And the reason yep. it was closed is because you had a company tweet that insulin was now free, which was <laughs> not true. And that company lost $3 billion. I should know the name of this, but like you had yep. all these parody accounts. You had a, a Ted Cruz parody account saying like, I can't wait to go bomb Iraq. So you <laughs> had, and, and, and no one's going to check, like this is not the official account, right? Like, like, like the average Twitter user is not able to uh, figure that out. So I, I kind of agree with you, but- well, I mean, Whatever. and he also only made, uh, I think, a half a million dollars on that Twitter blue thing. So phew, he's got a, he's got a lot more people to verify. Until yeah. it makes money well, back. When it comes back, I will I will buy it for sure. <laughs> Tom Tool, who is your turkey of the year? So the, the, there's just so many options in the real estate industry. Um, I I'm going to go with one in particular. Remember like a year ago and like the beginning of this year, everyone's talking about, like, oh, we got to buy real estate in the metaverse. We got to buy this virtual land plots. Anyone who spent their money on land in the metaverse you have a 61 percent loss on your hands since november of 2021 the average number of uh of what it costs for a plot of land in the metaverse which doesn't even exist by the way like i guess i, don't, I, don't know, I guess it's like the sims or something um it went from thirty seven thousand dollars down to fourteen thousand dollars and people were spending millions i mean mark cuban came out and said and he's mark cuban loves crypto by the way like he's big on crypto he goes, this is one of the dumbest things I've seen people do in a very long time. And there was real estate agents like, oh, I'm going to sell real estate in the metaverse. You know what's going to be worth more? Selling actual real estate, things that you own. And I think it's great for us, but those guys are turkeys. Those gals are yeah. turkeys. They I hope they blew all their Thanksgiving budget on their fake land that doesn't exist anymore. And they're eating <laughs> a turkey bowl from Wawa with some cranberry sauce on it. They're eating a virtual dinner. Why do you think they're accepting? 
Why do you think Eric slept on the couch last night? He spent <laughs> all this money in the metaverse. The wedding budget went to the metaverse. Yeah. Is that what happened? For the record, I did not buy one piece of land in the metaverse. I okay. just invested all my money in Thorchain, which went from twenty dollars to a buck ten. But that is all not right, my Kat, fault. Now that you know what turkey means, who is your turkey of the year? Well, it's not a well. I guess it's a theme. This is the craziest. Whoops. Are you there? Are yeah, you there? Kat just dropped her, her right AirPod. There. She's back. That, yep. that right there is my turkey. No, so we had the craziest story I have ever heard in real estate. I don't know if anybody can top this, but basically my turkey is we had buyers that purchased, signed their closing documents, went to the final walkthrough, took a picture of their house at closing. Everyone celebrating. Oh, I just bought a house. Come to find out the seller's agent was forging all the documents of the sale and related to the seller. And it was actually, the seller had no idea it was on the market or being sold. And we had to oh. find our clients another house on their closing day. I mean, they had already told all their friends. They had taken the photo. We were all excited. Oh they got the cooler with all the swag that we give people at closing. And all of a sudden they were like, what? And so and my they turkey, how crazy is that story? Please top that story. I mean, that's absurd. I don't think I can. I mean, is the sell is the listing agent in jail? Are they are they in They're Guantanamo Bay? They're not selling Bay? real estate anymore. No, we we yeah. Guantanamo Bay. So that's my turkey is all of the agents that think that they can sell real estate and. They're just not. I, can't. I like that <laughs> technique. Actually, you just the seller has no idea the sale <laughs> even happening, and you just start forging documents. There's so many things that have to happen for that to well, have happened. Well, DocuSign, it's hard. she made a different email. It was the craziest thing I've I mean, ever. You heard. saw the house. Was the seller in the house at all, or it was a vacant house? Well, yeah, you were the, the buyer. Was living. Yeah, no, the <laughs> sellers was was living in the house. I don't know how. So it was the daughter of the aid, the daughter of the father selling it. Selling oh it, not selling they, they just go get coffee real quick and they're doing the final walkthrough. <laughs> well, and he had some health issues. So it was like a, he may have actually been signing documents. I don't really know because like, she obviously didn't tell me the whole story, but um, wildest thing I've ever encountered in my life. I mean, how do you, how do you tell the client that too? I mean, it was just awful. Were there any signs throughout what, the deal? What did you say to him? <laughs> Yeah. By um, the way, this never happened. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, and the money you wired to escrow. Basically, and well, and it and raises the question of how accurate is DocuSign? How legitimate is, I mean, that could be a whole other Well, yeah, topic. you can email yourself any signature you want. Right. So that's my turkey of all the okay. agents that need to get out of the business. And is that yeah, mean that's... to say? That's kind of mean. But no, if I mean, it bless your heart. You're... Yeah, if you're if you're faking sellers and documents, when I mean, you're committing you, crimes, you probably shouldn't be selling yeah. real estate. So I mean, let's just—I mean, it's a criminal you're dealing with, not a real estate agent. Speaking of criminals, Eric, who is yes. your turkey of the year? Um, I have a general theme. Also, I don't really have a specific turkey. I think my turkey of the year is real estate agents that were focused on creating content for other real estate agents. It became little mini influencers the last like two years. There was an entire wave of many content creator, real estate influencers in this golden age from the pandemic, yeah. basically leading up to 2022. And no, Dan, I'm not including you because you create content for everybody. This is not specific <laughs> to you. But I do think that there was this like pull towards social media popularity um, for real estate agents that they did completely forget the basics. And I think that now that is such a huge turnoff to people of the TikTok dances, the pointing at the captions, the trending audios. I'm not saying not to do any of that at all. You could still mix that into your content strategy. But if that's all that you were doing the last couple of years, I think they are going to be long gone because your clients at this point, they don't want to see that. They, they're seeing all these horrible headlines. They want you to actually educate them, and make them feel comfortable, not see that you're trying to get Instagram famous. So I would just give that entire agent population a list. I mean, including myself, of course. I mean, this is <laughs> this is everybody here. And I had a lot to you're, do. You're I not think. an agent, so you're fine. Correct. Yes. But in influencing this, you know, I was all about like content, and everything and I still was. And that was a great way to grow on social media back then. Um, still is, but I think that there's just been a, a huge shift in what is palatable right now for clients right. and for other agents. Like we don't need to see another person 
lip syncing right now. It's just, it, it doesn't do anything for anybody. It's not getting views. It's not interesting. It's not educational. It, it's also time to evolve. So that stuff might have worked the last few years, yeah. but now it is time to evolve your content the same way that people went from making five minute long videos to a minute long to 30 second long videos, right? Mm -hmm. We're constantly adapting, constantly evolving. And the people that refuse to, or the people that maybe have their head in the sand and don't realize or are not self-aware that this new change in content is going to be the new, the new move in 2023, they are going to get exposed. Look at every single popular creator right now. Like I said, Ryan Strahan, Byron, Tom, you, everybody is doing these green screen videos and explaining articles. It's all educational stuff. It's not the funny stuff necessarily. I'll keep mm -hmm. doing the funny stuff. Yeah. But I think from an agent perspective, just trying to get other agents to laugh, unless you're like a Leonetti, of course, like then it's it's not really going to, it's not going to help your career probably in the next couple of years. And then one more turkey uh, <laughs> piggybacking off of Tom's turkey with the metaverse. Meta in general, Facebook, yep. disastrous move, naming their entire company Meta and basically going all in on a strategy of virtual reality, which no one gives a flying crap about. Okay. Don't worry. Wasn't going to say it. <laughs> I thought you were. I really scared all of you. Got all of you. You scared me. That's YouTube. my love language. Exactly. Well, YouTube algorithm doesn't is not friendly to curse words, but um, no one uses virtual reality. No one has put on a virtual reality set. And if you have, it's been for two seconds, you probably almost puked. So they went all in on the strategy <laughs> and no one cares. They should have just been focused on how do we beat TikTok yeah. and with Instagram, which seems like they're coming back to. Bam. Turkeys. That is turkeys of the year. And we will be. We got a bonus that. turkey. Oh, gee, more to talk about. Tell us another. So there's this guy we, uh, Dan, you might know him. He uh, bogarted the Thanksgiving holiday last year around an engagement, and all his friends put together these videos, oh. including one from Shooter McGavin himself. And everyone's Thanksgiving was ruined, oh, yeah. except his, Eric Simon. Yep. Just kidding. But I, who, we got a video from Shooter McGavin yep. the night before Thanksgiving. He delivered that thing at 11 o'clock at night. And then there's a great picture of Eric like this after he got engaged. And I think the caption was, Welcome to Hell, I believe. <laughs> Looking forward to the wedding, man. Yeah. Yes, thank you. For, for thank context, you. And Eric uh, got engaged last year, what, on Thanksgiving? Yes. He was selfish. SLP. Thanksgiving Aww. Eve. No, I didn't do it on Thanksgiving. I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> I didn't want to commandeer that entire holiday for myself. It just happened to be a time where everybody was around, did it on my golf course, got to squeeze in a quick nine. All right. It was, yeah, all right. Anyway, anyone, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the made it this far, Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Kat. Thank you, Eric. Make sure, as always, to like, subscribe, comment, let Byron know he can stay, or maybe tell him to come back. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I just yeah. Let's get let's get two words here. Either come back, Byron, or stay. <laughs> That's three words. Uh, anyway, any any final thoughts before we wrap this up? Happy Thanksgiving. No. How many how many final thoughts can we have? Yeah, you're right. All right, I apologize. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless all of your hearts. You are all my turkeys of the year. Uh, and thank you again for <laughs> being a part. Love it. Real estate <laughs> <in> metaverse. <laughs> Bye, guys.